this grass is a different type of grass than the one I used to ruin my knee, which was a rugby pitch. But still, this grass started to evolve somewhere between two and three mil billion years ago. So plants emerged at the earth and made it possible for us to, to live there because we got oxygen in the atmosphere. So it made it possible for currently seven billion people uh, to live on the earth. Next slide. But these seven billion people need energy. And this is normally what happens to the nature. If we want to produce electricity for all these seven billion people and the next three billion we're getting somewhere in, an, in a few decades, we're going to ruin the nature. And it was already discussed in one of the previous talks. Um, we have this discussion uh, on how are we going to produce enough for the whole world population. Next slide, please. So the, the coal-powered um, power station is one option. You could use solar panels. You could use hydropower. You could use wind turbines. Um, these are all better ways to generate energy, generate electricity. And we have biomass, and biomass is not fully used yet because these uh, plants are really small uh, power plants. These are small energy factories. And I'm going to show you that you can actually generate electricity direct from living plants. And this plant is generating electricity to turn this small fan. So the plant produces organic matter via photosynthesis, um, uses part of it for its own growth, releases part of it in, into the soil. Around the roots in the soil, uh, bacteria break down the organic matter and release electrons. And we harvest the electrons without harming the plant, without harming the bacteria. So we generate electricity directly, day and night, summer and winter. We use these uh, energy plants, these power plants that have been evolving for the last two to three billion years. And it works. And it works on this scale. Next slide, please. Well, we can do it bigger and we want to do it bigger because you can produce green electricity roofs, power your house with your green roof, and then ultimately use wetlands, any type of wetland to produce electricity. So 4% of the Dutch uh, wetlands would be sufficient to reach our 20% sustainable electricity in 2020. Can we do that before 2020? I want to do that, and I think we can. And it's not the only thing we can do. The next step, use rice paddy fields, use mangroves, use this type of nat natural areas so that everyone in the world can have plenty of oxygen and plenty of electricity. Thank you. Thank you. It was a terrific presentation. Um, I'm sort of interested in the sort of the economics of this whole thing. Uh, have you done any computations that demonstrate that this really works and that the overall um, the overall environmental balance is positive given all the material that you also need to install the the grid in the first place? Yeah. Okay. Um, in order for a technology to be fully sustainable, it needs to be environmentally sustainable, socially sustainable, and economically sustainable. So when it comes to economics, we have calculated that this technology can be cheaper than the current um, fossil electricity. So that part is, we're not going to develop uh, the next um, energy technology that needs to be subsidized for the next decades. So this can can be sustainable in an economic sense. When it comes to materials, the materials that are in this system are fully natural. So the plant is already there. It's a completely natural system. The electrodes. How do you harvest the electrons? What goes so on inside that? We've got that two box. carbon electrodes in this system. Carbon is a natural material. It's an inert material, so it stays there, but it's not harmful to to the plants. It doesn't leak. Uh, it doesn't leach out any uh, metals, so there are no metals in the system. Uh, and the nice thing is that actually the bacteria are doing the work for us. And that's the way the carbon material is only a way to transport the electrons. So um, at this moment, we still need a lot of material <coughs> to produce a little bit of electricity. But already in the next product, so the green electricity roof, which is probably be launched uh, next spring, 
we can reduce a lot of the materials and it's very sustainable. And basically the materials are um, very durable, so they can last up to 100 years and the system will pay back within uh, five to 10 years. Can an average household live on, on a green roof of average size? Uh, it depends on the, on the yeah, size of, course, of your roof. Um, with a 100 square meter of green electricity roof, you could power about 80% of the demand of your household. So that's quite a lot. Um, and roof is one of the options, but you could implement it into the garden as well. Or use um, hectares of wetland, uh, land that's not used, of elephant grass, whatever type of grass you would like. Uh, to generate electricity. So if you, if you use a hectare, uh, you could power 80 households on that. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.